ECM function is often a mystery to many technicians, but it couldn't be simpler. The ECM takes in data from its sensors, applies that to its programming, and then carries out the prescribed action. But what if the sensor lies to the ECM? What if it provides inaccurate information? If the ECM has not yet identified that the sensor is inaccurate, it's going to apply the information it receives to its programming. And that can result in a variety of drivability issues. Testing these sensors is easy if you take advantage of the Bosch VET100 circuit analysis tool. This tool allows you to supply a test voltage varying from 0.5 volts to 7 volts to the circuit being tested. It's also compatible with 6 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt systems. Best of all, it's simple to use. You'll get your best results when you use the VET100 with your scan tool. In this case, the Bosch ADS525X we featured a short while ago. Let's start with an overview. There are two types of sensors used on the vehicle. The first we're going to talk about is the variable resistance sensor. And usually you can identify these because it only has two wires. The ECM supplies a voltage and there's an internal resistor in the sensor that changes in resistance based on some outside factor, usually temperature or pressure. That change in resistance causes a voltage drop so that the voltage returning to the ECM is much less than what was sent by the ECM. It is this voltage that results in the reading that you see on your scan tool. A great example of this is the engine coolant temperature sensor. Now a couple of quick tips for you. You can get a quick check of the temperature sensors like the engine coolant temperature sensor by allowing the vehicle to cool down and then looking at it and comparing its reading to other temperature sensors on the vehicle like the intake air temperature sensor or outside air temperature sensor. If the vehicles have been sitting in the shop overnight, they should all read about the same. Another tip, make sure that you use Global OBD2 on your scan tool, if at all possible, to look at these sensor values. This will help prevent you from getting confused by a substitute value that a lot of manufacturers will use if there is indeed a problem. If you do see a variance, the question then becomes, is it the sensor, the wiring, or a fault in the ECM itself? That's where the VET100 comes in. Connect the VET100 to the vehicle battery. Adjust the VET100 test output using the touchpad and set the test voltage to the middle of the sensor's normal operating range. Disconnect the sensor and using the proper pin fit Connect the VET100 test lead to the harness side of the connector. Then push the toggle switch to apply the test voltage and note the reading on the scan tool. The scan tool data should match the voltage level that you put in with the VET100. Now it may read direct voltage or it may be converted to temperature or pressure. So be sure to check your published service information to know what value corresponds with what you put in. If the reading on your scan tool matches what you put in, then the chances are the sensor itself is what's bad. But if it's still different, that indicates a problem with voltage drop somewhere in the wiring between the sensor and the ECM, or even possibly a fault in the ECM itself. But it's easy enough to distinguish between the two using the VET100. Identify the sensor's return wire position in the ECM connector and carefully use a piercing wire connector to attach the VET100's test lead. This now bypasses the wire to the connector. Repeat the test and compare your results. If your scan tool data now agrees with the input from the VET100, the problem is in the wiring between the ECM and the sensor. Now, while not typical, if there's still a disparity, it could be a fault in the ECM itself. The next sensor I want to talk about is the variable voltage sensor. These sensors typically have three wires, power, ground, and then a sensor signal return wire back to the ECM. Examples of these include throttle position sensors 
and manifold absolute pressure sensors. Testing them is very similar to testing the two wire sensors we just looked at. Use the VET100 to apply a known test voltage at the sensor's connector and make sure that the scan tool reading agrees with it. And don't forget, we always check power and ground feeds to any electrical component to make sure that that's not contributing to the problem. If you want any more information on the Bosch VET100, the Bosch ADS525X scan tool, or any of the fine Bosch diagnostic product line, visit www.boschdiagnostics.com.